Hello, I'm Dr. Mark J. Gannon, the director of the Low Vision Institute in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's talk about macular degeneration. The macula is the center of the retina in the back of the eye. It's about the size of a pinhead, but it contains more than half of all the cells in the retina. There are millions and millions of cells very tightly compressed together in the macula, and they're responsible for three major functions. They enable us to determine direction, they enable us to see fine detail, and also because most of the cone cells are there, it is responsible for color perception as well. So when the macula deteriorate, deteriorates, we lose functions in those particular areas. When we're talking about macular degeneration, the condition itself is genetic. We have to have a genetic predisposition toward macular degeneration, and it's also an age-related condition, so we have to live long enough for the genes to effectively d demonstrate themselves and, and the condition to manifest itself. In macular degeneration, we have two basic forms, wet and dry. In the dry form, we have a lack of nutrients and oxygen getting to the tissues in the retina. And as those tissues are deprived from oxygen and, and nutrients, the cells themselves die. And as they die, we lose vision. The tissue itself surrounding it may also become more fragile. And if the blood vessel walls in that area also are affected and become more fragile, then the vessels themselves may rupture. If they rupture and hemorrhage, we then have wet macular degeneration. We see wet macular degeneration about 10% of the time. And what we try to do in patients with wet macular degeneration is stabilize the condition. And by stabilizing it, we effectively turn it back into dry macular degeneration, which progresses much slower, but we eliminate the tremendous vision loss that may occur when a hemorrhage or leakage is taking place in the macula. We do the stabilization in a wet macular degeneration patient utilizing various different formats. In the older formats, we used to use thermal laser. And what we would do there would be to essentially weld the blood vessels shut that were leaking that would stop the leakage in the particular area where we hit the, hit the macula with the uh, laser, the thermal or hot laser, but we would also destroy tissue in the immediate area, and those tissues were responsible, just as the branches of a tree, for supplying other areas of the retina with oxygen and nutrients. So when we welded a vessel shut to stop the leakage in that area, we also affected peripheral portions of the retina beyond that, and we had extreme vision loss or additional vision loss. So the thermal laser basically was a sacrificial instrument. We would stabilize the condition, stop the progression of it, but we would have to sacrifice some vision in order to accomplish it. The next series of, of treatments that came along we call photodynamic therapy. And this is a drug that we inject into the bloodstream, and it's a drug that's stimulated or activated by a specific wavelength of light. And that wavelength of light is cold. It's not a thermal or hot laser, but rather just a cold laser that excites the drug. And what we would do there would be to inject the drug in the bloodstream, and when it got into the eye, into the retina, we would essentially excite that drug with a laser in the area where the leakage occurred, and it would attack the vessel walls there and stop the leakage. The advantage, of course, was that it didn't do any tissue damage in that area, and if it left the lumen or the opening of that vessel intact, the vessel will continue to function to supply oxygen and nutrients to the rest of the retina. The downside is it didn't work very, very effectively in a, in a great deal of the patients that it was utilized on. So we only got a response in about 3% of all the patients with wet macular degeneration. In the last four or five years, new drugs have come to the forefront, particularly Lucentis and Avastin. And these are drugs that we can inject into the eye, and without doing any damage to the tissue, they in fact cause those vessels to stop leaking, and in the case of new vessels that are growing into the retina, to retract. This was a very exciting development. There's a very specific type of wet macular degeneration that occurs, and I'm going to use an analogy of, of moss growing between the cracks in a sidewalk. When we have a little crack in the sidewalk, the moss grows up in between it, and sometimes it spreads out across the surface. When it does that, the light coming onto the sidewalk doesn't make it to the sidewalk itself. And in these types of wet macular degeneration, we have little vessels that grow through the cracks in the retina and spread out on the surface, and light doesn't get to the cells beneath them. In the past, all the treatments that we used stopped the vessels from growing, and we would essentially uh, stabilize the condition but not reverse anything. Utilizing these new drugs, we found that when we inject them, those vessels seem to coagulate and disappear. And as they do, the light returns to the retina beneath them, and the vision improves. 
So we've seen in many instances when we start treating with Avastin and Lucentis, a nice improvement in the vision in those eyes. And through the continued use of those drugs, we're able to keep the condition in check and under control. The advantage, of course, is we're able to keep a lot more vision uh, in, intact and stabilized for a much greater period of time in those patients who are otherwise threatened by visual loss from wet macular degeneration. And we're also looking for new methods to treat dry macular degeneration, and there are a lot of things on the forefront that we can discuss at a later time. And I want you to remember also that there's new hope in sight, and thank you.